Hi, my name is Tom O'Toole, and I work for FLIR Systems, who manufactures infrared cameras. And today I'm with Fleming Lund of Infrared Diagnostics. And Fleming is a HERS rater, as well as a BPI certified energy auditor, yep. and a certified home inspector, correct? That's right. Well, today Fleming's going to take us around this home that has some energy efficiency issues and show us the latest tools and technologies that he uses to locate air leaks and missing insulation. Now, what kind of technology is he going to show us today? Well, we're going to do a professional energy audit and uh, we put a number of different tools into use uh, to do that. Um, the infrared camera, mm -hmm. your blower door for leaks and air infiltration. Moisture meters comes into it too. If we are looking at a spot and we think that it may be moisture instead of insulation issue, we confirm that with a moisture meter. We use a bore scope in areas where we maybe need to get in and do a further analysis. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we usually finish it off with a safety test using uh, gas leak detection on the heating uh, appliances mm -hmm. as well as uh, carbon monoxide uh, safety test. So this is more than just a standard visual oh, inspection. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually a very in-depth energy audit. And our goal is to, to get all the information put together in a report that the customer can really sit down and figure out which steps should I take to uh, fix the problem. To fix the problem and really to get forward and uh, get it done right. Great. Well, let's take a look around. So we're going to get started now with our energy audit and Fleming, I guess, what's the first step that you take? Well, I arrive at the house and introduce myself to the customer. Um, we may sit down at the kitchen table, just talk about what kind of issues are in this particular home. And uh, after that, we'll take a walk around so that I get familiar with the layout of the house. If they have had issues with ice dams or draft uh, in a specific room, they can mm -hmm. point that out to me. I know then when I come back with my tools where I can maybe uh, diagnose uh, Get a little bit more in depth. Yeah, exactly, see. specific problems. Okay. Well, this is one of the spots that we're going to be looking further at in detail and see uh, if there's some active moisture. So we'll put the moisture meter on that and we'll put the infrared camera on it and see if there's any further action needed or whether it's an, a past old issue. Right here, we, we're looking at a um, like a soffit or a built-in portion of the wall. It's either plumbing running upstairs or maybe a part of the heating duct. I mm. probably suspect the heating duct because mm. there's a lot of heat coming out of that. So and the white's actually hotter and the dark is yeah, colder on the image. If it's a heating duct running up, it may just be a metal trunk with mm -hmm. no insulation on it. Mm. So there's a lot of heat loss right around that. And uh, if the customer would allow us to and we can go in and verify it with the bore scope, that would be a way of uh, confirming that. Interesting. And that may be enough of an issue to just suggest that they should open up that little bit of the wall and uh, have the uh, uh, trunk or uh, the duct insulated. Hmm. The connection between the frame wall and the fireplace, and this will probably show up a little bit more when we do the blower door test, but this already tells me this is an area that I need to come back and look at because it's pretty cold right down along the brick. You can see cold air coming yeah. right in from the outside. We'll confirm that once we get the blower door on, then we'll come back with the infrared camera and uh, maybe the smoke stick, and we can certainly uh, verify that that is the case. So these are older double-hung wood frame windows, single-layer glass with a storm window on them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that can work if it's cocked and tight and uh, some good... Uh, weather strips and stuff like that around it, that, that mm -hmm. certainly can work. So it's not always that you have to go to replace a window. You can actually repair and adjust the window and... Seal kind of what's around yeah, it. Okay. And get a uh, existing window to work pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can actually feel kind of some of the cold air coming in. Yeah, from here. so we see it in the corners. And of course, uh, the double hung windows tend to be the worst because there's more potential for openings. Uh, mm -hmm. A casement window it's a little more straightforward and seals better once it's closed. This room is an addition? Yeah, this uh, from the homeowner, we found out that this used to be a screen porch mm -hmm. that was converted to a uh, family room. And uh, this is really where they're spending the time and this was one of the items that was brought up to, this is probably the worst room in the mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. uh, where they really want to try to make some modification to make it more comfortable. Mm -hmm. From the scanning that we see here, this is right over the side door to the exterior. There's some... Yeah, that's very obvious. Yeah, some significant uh, gaps in the insulation there. We'll 
probably have to just uh, put a moisture meter on it too to verify that we're not looking at moisture instead of it could be a roof leak. Right, a so, water leak versus an air leak. Yeah, okay. so, but it, it has more of the characteristics of um, gaps in the insulation. We also have a number of recessed lights in this room. Just from past, we know that that's a source of air infiltration. Mm -hmm. They don't show a whole lot of leakage right now uh, without the blower door on, but we'll come back to those with the blower door on and I would suspect that we're gonna feel a lot of uh, cold air infiltration from those. So we're gonna set up the, the blower door and we usually try to find a central exterior door to the building so that we're gonna draw evenly from the building. A blower door is essentially made up of a couple things, right? You've got the fan. Yeah, we've got a, a huge fan that'll move about 6,000 cubic feet of air per minute. Mm -hmm. And then right here we have a frame that's adjustable so we can fit it into most uh, front doors. And then we have a shroud, a canvas that goes over it to create the seal. And the, the main part of it is the uh, uh, manometer mm -hmm. to show us a pressure difference in the building. And then we're going to hook up a computer to it that's going to help us capture the data and do some graphs and some calculations on it. Okay, so you can take things like the infrared pictures and the visual pictures as well as the information from the computer and actually put in a report for the customer. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. And, and one of the nice features with this is that a lot of customers will ask me to come back after they've done all the repairs. And now we had maybe uh, 2,500 CFM of air leakage in the building. I come back half a year later and they've dropped it down to 1,500. And What's can, CFM? Uh, cubic feet of air per minute, sorry. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, the, uh, that's what the uh, blower door is going to measure for us. And by having that data uh, uh, pre-insulation, pre-air sealing, and then mm -hmm. post, we can really confirm that the improvements uh, have taken place. And then if the insulation contractor missed a little spot or whatever, we can... Uh, locate that and uh, things and can be, yeah. yeah. So before we get going, there's a couple things we need to take care of from a safety standpoint so that we don't burn the place down. Yeah, or because these are potentially carbon monoxide producing appliances. And if we're creating enough of a vacuum or suction in the house, um, even though that this is a sealed combustion system, so I, I'm not too concerned about this, but mm -hmm. let's be on the safe side. So we just want to turn this off. Okay. Um, so again, this is a sealed combustion system, meaning that it uh, takes from the outside the combustion air, it brings it right back out again. So it shouldn't be a problem with this either. The older system that has open combustion system, that's where we're concerned. But let's okay. turn it off anyway. And then I usually leave my car keys right here because uh, I want to make sure that I turn these appliances back on again good before I leave the house. <laughs> so I know that if my car keys are sitting right there, you didn't turn it back on. I'm not going to be leaving.